Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and this week I am so excited to show you a product. I got a little sneak preview of a NAM, but I think it's going to be so game-changing for people who are learning guitar or trying to get better in your technique in guitar. You see, there's this, this theory that... Uh, has been out there for a long time called the cage system and it's a way of learning chords and shapes and how chords are structured but there's tons of videos online you're gonna if you search cage system in your youtube search right now you're gonna come up with hundreds and thousands of videos on this um, i have watched several of them and i will say nine times out of ten every time i watch them i come out more confused than when i went in i kept seeing things about how oh that you know you can take the different shapes of guitar chords and of open chords like the C, the A, the G, the E, the D, and that's where Caged came from. And you can learn how to make chord shapes throughout the fretboard. But I'd watch these videos, I'm like, how are they stretching their fingers like this? What's going on? I can't do that. My hands aren't shaped like that. What's happening? Well, what Noisy Clan have done is put together this guitar chord compass. And it is a easy, handy dandy chart that actually moves as you slide it. So you can tell it in this little box here, the key that you want, and then slide it and it shows you the chord shapes as you go up and down your guitar neck. We'll take a close up of this in a second. It also comes with this handy dandy book that is literally 88 pages, I think, yep, 88 pages of awesome knowledge that really simplify things in layman's terms. They don't get super complicated. It's just a really, really good way to approach the cage system. And really, more than the cage system, it teaches you how a guitar chord is made and formed. And that's really what the cage system is about. But I'm gonna stop rambling. Let's hop over to our uh, demo board. I'm gonna put this on there and show you how this works. It's super simple. This is only gonna take us a few minutes and you'll be amazed at the results. Okay, so for today's demo, I'm not even gonna plug into an electric guitar. I've got my mics hooked up. I'm gonna have my handy uh, Taylor 717 here with me to do a little bit of the legwork just to show you the chord structures and how these are done. But this isn't really about the sound. This is about the decoder itself because this thing is magical. Now, we kind of talked about this at the beginning. I wanna show you the front and I'm gonna show you the back of this. So on the back of this, there's a little slider that will move the front back and forth as you use it. I'm gonna flip it back over so you can see. As we move this, you can see the key is up at the top. So if you're writing the key of E, you'll see how it has the different chord shapes throughout here. But really, I'm gonna start and see because I think this is the easiest way to show the cage system and this is what made sense to me. You see the cage system, the whole evolution of this is essentially that there are five chords that can be played open on the fretboard and when i say open i mean we call kind of call them the cowboy chords when you look up here the c shape the a shape the g shape the e shape and the d shape now those are five basic chord shapes that anybody who's started playing guitar, those are five of the most basic chords you're gonna learn. I'm not gonna go real deep into depth on those. You can go pick those videos up, tutorials on how to play those chords, but they're super easy and they all work in a nice open position. Now, what the cage system does is take those shapes and teaches you how to move them up and down the neck so that you can essentially, if you learn caged, you will have five different places on the neck of your guitar that you can play the same chord. And if you memorize all the different chords and all the different positions of them, you'll essentially know your entire guitar neck and know how to play those chords. So when you see your favorite musician playing up here on the neck and they're playing a chord and you're like, whoa, what chord was that? What are they doing down there? You'll know what it is and how they actually structured it. But here's the secret sauce of the cage system. You see, what I thought, because I learned bar chords first, so the E chord, which is this right up here where we've got our, our middle finger right here on the uh, third string up, we've got our pinky and our ring finger 
on the uh, fifth and the sixth string up, and we play that open, and we play all the strings together, that's our E chord. And bar chords are simply sliding that up and down the neck, and like if we wanted to play a G chord, we stick our whole finger over whatever you use, the, the notes on the E string, the low E, and you pick whatever note you're trying to play. So G is on the third fret, so I'm gonna lay my finger across the third fret. I'm gonna keep these in the same spot, and now I've got a G. If I slide up to the fifth fret, now I've got an A and so on and so forth, right? So that's a movable chord. We're moving these bar chords up and down the neck and that's creating chords. What I didn't understand is what you're actually doing when you're doing that. And that's what the decoder does really well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the decoder here. Now the decoder will show you right away because we're playing in the key of C, it shows you the very first note that it's gonna teach you is the C note. So you'll see an open C, that cowboy chord C, is we leave both of our high E and our G string open, so we're not gonna fret those at all. We're gonna take our first finger and we're gonna put it on the first fret of the B string, right here, right? And then we're gonna take our second finger and we're gonna put that on the second fret of the D string and our third finger on the third fret of the A string. And in doing that, we've now created a C chord. And we're just gonna play the we're not going to play the high or the low E string. We're going to play all the other strings wide open. There's our C, right? So that's showing us our C shape of this note. Simple, efficient, boom. There's how you play a C. But what's important, it's not the shape of the chord. It's not this big, wide open chord. What's important is how is it a C? Why is it a C? And the reason that it's a C is to make a chord, you need a root note, which is the note you're trying to play, the chord you're trying to play. So a C then you need the third and the fifth. And we've talked about in previous episodes, and uh, Nate talks about it in Chords and Coffee quite a bit, how root notes, third notes, fifths, intervals, he teaches a lot of that. So if you have questions on that, please go over, hop over on those videos and you'll understand it. But really, essentially, what you need to know is to make a chord, you need three notes. And in this case, what we're using is the root note, the third, and the fifth. And you'll notice on this chart, what you've got is everywhere there's a black dot, that's your root note. Everywhere there is a white circle, that is either the third or the fifth, and they've marked it as the third or the fifth of the note. So to play the C, all you need is three strings. You don't need six strings to play a chord. You just need three strings that you can play out. So really, to make this, all we really need is we need the root note that's right here on the third fret, we need the third that's on the second fret, and then we need this open five right here. So I can literally just play those three strings. And now we've got a C. Easy peasy, there's your C note, or there's your C chord, you're good to go. It's that simple. So those three strings by themselves play a C. Now you'll also notice that they're down here, the open three, the, or the open uh, E, the open G, and just my first finger on that first fret, that's also playing the entire C chord. So let's just play those top three strings. That's also a C. So all of those are literally C notes and C chords that we're playing. We're just moving how they're played around the fretboard. And secretly what I've just done there is I've shown you the D shape, but we're gonna get there in a second. I don't wanna jump ahead of myself. But really, all that's all you need to make a chord. You just need three notes, the first, the third, and the fifth, and now you know how to play a chord anywhere on the neck. So the question is, is how do you find those places where those are at? Well, that's where the chart comes in. So we already know how to play an open C, but what if we wanna play a C a little bit higher up to give it a little higher sound on it? Well, look right down here, there is three notes right together, right here in a row. Those three notes on the fifth fret, which are just these three notes right here. So you can just lay your finger, your first finger right on there. Guess what? Also a C right there, we've got our C. And if you notice, that is also the same as playing an open A. That's why it's the A shape of the cage. When you spell out cage, C, we have the C shape. The A shape is just that one finger there, which means anywhere on the neck that you slide, that you play those three strings together and you lay that over, that's a chord. 
everywhere you do that, that is a chord. That's one of the most biggest tricks of funk. And it's also a big trick of rock. You will see tons of people playing just that single finger laid down on there and playing those three strings together. Now you got a chord. Now where the cage system lost me was the G shape. Because the G shape, if you remember right, when it's open, you're playing this open notes up here. You're playing with your first finger on the second fret of the A string, your second finger on the third fret of the, of the low E, and your ring finger on the third fret of the high E, and then everything else is open, right? That's a G, that's our cowboy chord G. Now the problem with that is, if we're making that into a bar chord, if we're gonna put our finger down and try to play that chord, we gotta stretch our fingers out way far out because we're going all the way back here. That is a big old honking stretch to be able to do that. And our fingers may not be able to do that. That is a long way to go. Because if I'm playing, if I've got this bar laid down right here so that I can play this note, this note, and this note, that's a big stretch. But what we just learned with this system is you don't have to play all those notes. All we need is the first, the third, and the fifth, right? Well, look, where are those at in the G? The first, the third, and the fifth. So now to do that, all I have to do is put my first finger on the eighth fret of the E string, put my second finger on the seventh fret of the A string, and then put my first finger back here on the fifth fret of the D string and just play those top three strings. Now I've got the G shape of a C chord, so I'm playing a C just like I would play a G. Which means I can also go back here and play this back at the beginning too. Still sounds like a G. Slide it up here and now it's gonna be a C. So I've learned that shape. I'm not playing any of the lower three strings. I'm just playing those. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, over and over and over again. So you do not have to stretch your fingers out into some abnormal, funky, wild shape to do this. All you gotta do is play the first, the third, and the fifth. Same thing down here. You could play the first, the third, and the fifth down here. It's just a little bit trickier because your fifth is gonna be back here, and that makes it a little wonky different shape, but you can do that. So not only does this show you the C, the A, the G, the E, the D shape, it also teaches you just where the one, three, and five are all up and down your fretboard so that you can get to know those notes together and where to play them at. This will come into play in soloing. It'll come into play in creating your own chords. There's so much more you can do. And that's where the book comes in handy because it teaches you how to turn those into minor chords, teaches you how to do diminished chords, all those crazy things that Nate talks about over on Chords and Coffee that when you're a new guitarist, sometimes you can get lost on that. It simplifies them so well. And I urge you, urge you, urge you, there is no better teacher that I've ever had than Nate White. Go watch Chords and Coffee if you haven't seen it. He does a great job of, of using simple terms to teach you those techniques as well. And I, I cannot recommend it enough. So please, if you haven't given it a chance, hop over to there on our channel and take a listen to some of the lessons that he's given, especially on like triads and things. It's amazing what you'll learn. Well, let's keep going. We've learned the C, the A, the G shape. Now, the E shape, I think we already know this because the E shape is that bar chord we were talking about earlier. This is one of the first chords you ever learn. And you'll see here the bar chord is simply this bar on the eighth fret. And then you've got your one, three, or your root note, your third, and your fifth are those notes that you were playing when it was open. Now, here's again that little trick, remember? We can do this just like a bar chord. So I really can put my finger across the eighth fret, and then I've got my normal E shape right there. There's a C, that's the chord C. But you know what else is a chord C? If I take this finger off and I just keep that feeling, and I just play my A, D, and G strings, that's also a C. Same chord, it sounds fuller, playing it with my finger, but it's the same exact chord. So you've got two different voicings there depending on how you want to use it and how you feel with your hands. Maybe just, are you tired that day and you can't stretch out that old finger right there? No big deal. That's how you can do it and still play those chords. And then last but not least, one of my favorite movable chords, the D chord. And the D chord is so simple. Again, because it's an open chord, if you were trying to bar chord a D, it's kind of a pain because you've got to put a bar over here. you got to make that D shape down here. And that's a stretch. That hurts. It doesn't feel comfortable to do this. You don't need to do that. It's You can. 
it's a pain and if you get your fingers to stretch that way then yay for you you're going to be an amazing guitarist and you can make much more fuller and richer chords but when you're first starting out you don't need to learn to do that all we got to do is look on the 12th fret we need the third and the fifth are right down there on our high e and our g string and then all we're going to do is on the b string we're going to put our ring finger right there on the 13th fret and now watch here we go there's that d shape now little trick for you the 12th fret is also the same as open it's the same exact notes which is why if we just put one finger on the B string right here on that first fret that's the C chord D shape which is the same as the D shape down here on the 12th fret C chord D shape just an octave higher so you can hear it's the exact same chord just moved up and down the neck in five different positions so stinking simple. Now, for those who are lost on this video, I said a lot of words. I've taken 15 minutes talking about this. Don't let that overwhelm you. What you need to know is this is one of the easiest charts to figure out where to play chords on the neck of your guitar that you'll ever need. Give it a try. I think you're gonna be blown away with how it works. And I know I've probably made that more convoluted now and more people are confused just like I get when I watch all those other YouTube videos. Don't worry about me rambling. I promise you this is gonna make a lot more sense when you see the decoder in person. This thing is absolutely amazing. Showing you how to voice that C, that A, that G, that E, and that D chord, it makes things visually make so much more sense on the fretboard. And what gets really good is when you start learning all the different chords and you start flipping this chart and you say, okay, I wanna learn F sharp, let's see where F sharp is. Things start to fall together and you start to memorize the fretboard without even meaning to, where if you've been struggling with that, if you know, okay, I know all the, all the notes on the E string, but maybe I'm struggling with the notes on the other strings, this is going to be magical in helping you memorize those notes because once you know where the root notes are, everything else falls into place because you know that the C note is right here. You know that the C root is right here. You know exactly where it is on the fretboard. And I'm telling you, spend a week or two learning the cage system and just practicing it and you will be amazed how the fretboard just unlocks for you and makes things so much easier. And the other thing is, I'm a guy who jumps into things. I'm gonna admit it, I did not read this book when it came in. I saw this, I jumped into it, and I started trying to teach myself the cage system. It worked, I honestly figured it out way faster looking at this, but it wasn't until I cracked open this book and I read it, it took me about an hour and a half to read this entire book. It's not a long read, but I am telling you what this does to help you decipher how a chord is made, to visualize things, Noisy Clan does such a good job of putting it in layman's terms without using industry speak, without using music theory speak that would get you lost if you took a college course and you're like, oh Lord, I, I could not fathom that. I'm telling you, this book is absolute magic. I cannot thank the folks at Noisy Clan enough. This genuinely is going to change how I do chord structuring and how I start to write songs myself. So. I cannot think of enough for putting this together. Just absolutely amazing. I'm gonna have a link to uh, where you can pick this up down below. Um, hopefully someday we'll be able to get these at Palin as well, but I, I at least can get you a link on it so that you can order it direct from Noisy Clan in the meantime. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions that you have. Um, I know that Nate has some awesome videos on the cage system. After I finished messing around with this, I went and watched Nate's video again, and it made so much more sense, and things just kind of flowed together now, and I enjoyed that so much. So I'm also gonna put a little link to Nate's video in there because I think you'll wanna watch it after you get some time and practice this. Go back and watch the chords and coffee that he did on the caged, and I think it's gonna make a lot of sense and really click with you, and you're really gonna love it. So have some fun. Thank you so much for spending your July 4th with me. Next week, we're gonna be taking a look at some fun pedals. I am actually going to be on vacation for a couple weeks, but I'm going to have some videos ready to throw up on here for you guys to listen to. Uh, so I may not be in the live chat, but uh, I will be around. If you have any questions, make sure you just leave them in the comments down below. Well, thank you so much for coming out this week. I can't wait to talk to you next week. Take care and have a wonderful week.